his coffee and not get it at 630 like he's used to. So uh, yeah, and that's that, that was it. That was the most complicated. So all good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'll be right back. I haven't got a pen here. <laughs> Hi, Rick. Hi. How are you? Good. How's it going? It's going all right. Thanks. That's good. Yeah. Are, um, we call, hmm? are we the only two on? No, so um, Kevin is here, Paula's here. She just stepped away to grab a pen. Okay. Um, Beth. Here she is. Hi, Paula. Um, Hello, how are you? Good, how you doing? Good, are we not gonna see you tonight? We are, I'm, I actually didn't put this on. I have to figure out how to get this on. Here we go. There you go. There you are. Good to see your face. Yes, yeah. nice to see the face. <clears throat> okay, so we'll just, I was emailing with Laura not long ago, so we'll just give her a minute to hop on and join us. Okay. Oh, um, and um, yeah, that's, it's kind of a busy agenda, but I'm hoping we'll, um, we will um, move right through. That's my that's my plan. I love that plan. Yes. Yes. I'm all over it. Yep. <laughs> and here's Laura. Just letting her in right now. Hi, Laura. Give her a second for the audio to kick in. Um, okay. Um, so I think we're all here, so I will go ahead and call the meeting to order. Um, we don't need a note taker. That's a Yay. fabulous first thing. Um, oh, man. <laughs> what a relief that is. Yeah. Yes. yes. Um, I'm just finishing up my last minute. Okay. I, I have one myself that I, I need to see if I can sort out or I may have to beg for mercy, but, um, <laughs> Um, so um, first up is public comment, and I see nobody present, so we can move on from that. Um, I uh, thank you, um, Bob, for joining us. Um, that was kind kind of you. I know Jean was really, um, you know, wanted to make sure we were well supported, and Jean is off tonight, so thank you for. Right, she's on vacation, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, good for her. Yes. Um, well deserved at this point. Yes, yes. Um, so, uh, Laura, your audio all set now? Yeah, hi. I think so. Can you hear me? Yep. Yes. Yep. Hi, oh, okay, thanks. Okay, hi. Everybody's hi. here, Laura. Uh. So I wanted to lead off with um, the monthly report. Uh, and Laura, I know you, if you're ready, if you wanna share with us what you have. Did you hear me okay, Laura? Okay, sorry, can you hear me? It's okay, yes. Can okay, sorry, I don't know what's going on, it's quirky. Okay, um, so the first thing, I have a couple of different things, sorry. So. I'll just read down the monthly report and then I'll um, email it to um, Jackie so she has it and she can add it into the minutes. So um, again, I made a list of everything, so I'll just read it down. Attend, attended monthly, um, attended Board of Health meetings, obviously, you know, all the ones we had, had mm -hmm. meetings with the chair and um, I got to talk to Rick last month and get to know him a little bit reported all the weekly all the weekly covid cases total to incident command every wednesday at around four o'clock reported um, daily case numbers to eleanor before she left which i couldn't remember what date she left on 17. reported what was it yeah. 17th okay yep. um reported daily addresses to first responders to ensure safety attended dph calls so can you just repeat that? I didn't I didn't hear it. Sorry. The first one. Reported daily addresses to first responders. Ah, thank you. Attended DPH calls two times per week. Attended weekly emergency preparedness calls. Met with my inspectors and nurses and needed as needed. 
entered payroll, maintained vacation and sick time to ensure coverage, reviewed guidelines that were released by DPH, set new guidelines, checklist, inspection reports to the Board of Health for review, attended weekly, um, attended weekly eat meeting, which have ended this month, um, oversaw and reviewed the inspections. I think I actually added that one twice. Met with and distributed the mosquito spray notification that Jane Wellman sends out via reverse 911. Yep. We conducted over 33, I think it was 33 plus three. Um, it was 33, I'm sorry, it was 28 complaints, 33 inspections, and three re inspections. The uh, complaints, Laura, anything yep. of interest? 28. No. Okay. No, right no, now. Repeats, uh, no repeat offenders, anything like that? Um, some repeat offender, well, some repeat complaints. Some repeat complaints. For, for, well, for the same vendor, I'm assuming? Yes. Okay. okay. Um, approved mileage reimbursement, ran made, um, two complete Maven audits with the nurses, reviewed civic function permits, reported to the HAN alert, um, started setting up our flu clinic. So we have two at the fire station. One, September 24th and September 28th. Those are both open to the public. Then we set up three um, flu clinics with the police station. Or I set up three um, flu clinics with the police station. Those are upstairs, so they're closed to the public. So we usually don't release those just because no one from the public can go to those. Ordered everything who, along. Who, who, who's, who's the... Um... Who who are the clients for those closed points of dispensing? The police station. The yeah. police. Okay, so you run. It's three shifts. Do you cut? Okay, thanks. Updated, is that for, uh, can I can I ask Laura? Is that for just the police uh, employees or all town employees? No, just the police at the police station in a locked section that no one can go into unless they're cleared by the police station. And so we don't do, we, we don't set things up for uh, town employees to, to have flu shots. Oh no, I set up, I set up 12 flu clinics last year. Yep. I actually okay. did the most flu shots in the entire, out of my entire emergency preparedness last yep. year. So I've just started setting them up and the first people I reached out to were police and fire. Oh, okay. I don't know, if, what do you think? Do you think we, I was actually, Debating on that. Um, should we have one at the police at the city halls where town hall is closed? So mm -hmm. last year I did two at the three at the police station, two at the fire station, uh, two at town hall, all the housing complexes, um, the Coolidge School, and. The, what's that called, the fair that's in the square on September 11th? Town Day? Uh, no, that's the, um, the street fair. Fall street fair. Fall street fair. Um, <clears throat> so this year we're not doing fall street fair. I'm still going to do all the other ones, but I didn't know if we wanted to do town hall where that's still closed. I was actually going to ask that question tonight. So when you say do town hall, do you mean just a, a clinic for town hall employees? No, it's always open to everyone. Okay. And you've traditionally done it at town hall. Um, right. One of the 12 that we do is at town hall. Yeah. Oh, yeah. and we do house visits, obviously. So I'm old enough <laughs> to remember that at one point we did, we had tents and we did flu clinics outside of town hall. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if really? that's an option. Mm -hmm. Sure. I mean, it would be a safe option in terms of social distancing and being outside and things like that. What do people think? I think people would feel more comfortable going to yes. the common than rather into town hall. <clears throat> I think it's a great and, idea. 
And I do recall someone telling us that there are tents available oh, when we were uh, setting up for the uh, voting. Yeah. Uh, one of the, I think DPW has tents that we can use. Is that correct, Bob? Yeah, we definitely can get tents, chairs, whatever is needed. Okay. And the only thing is getting the weather to cooperate. Right. You'd have to set kind of a rain date option. Right. Yeah. But I like. Do you want yeah, to do like, like a drive the through then? Uh, we could do a drive through. We could go right over that cobblestone area and do a drive through. That's a thought too. Definitely would be something we want to involve police in and get their input. Yeah. Yeah. My sense is a Friday would be best because town hall staff isn't there. Um, and you probably and do it don't. in the parking lot. I was going to say you could probably do it in the parking lot. Yeah. That's a much safer drive through. Yes. Wouldn't back. I'd have to. Nine. I'd have to check with Elise because she's the nurse on that day. Christine does not work on Fridays. And so, oh, so that's a great um, question. I, so, are you when you do your your flu clinics, you you had just one one um, dispenser, one vaccinator, or or do you do multi? We do multi. Yeah, okay. you have volunteers, correct? Because I've done it. Yeah. I've never had volunteers. Can I have volunteers for that, Bob? I uh, I used to volunteer every year. Hmm. No, it wasn't Can a volunteer. I? I take that back. I got paid. Okay, I was going to say, I think we run into the same issue no, with HR. That right. We can't have on right. I got paid. It was a right. while ago. So, can how do we set that up so someone can get paid again to do that? First, you really need to determine whether you need extra help. Yeah, I mean, you've always done them in the past, and they haven't been widely attended. I don't think, right? I think, I've, I think um, I've always I've gone into uh, one minimum. two years ago, and I remember I was the only person when walking in the door. Granted, it was towards the end. Um, um, we've had a lot when when we've done the Coolidge ones. There's always been a lot of people there. But if if we're talking about um, flu shots for town employees, um, it would seem like, you know, you can email all the employees and say on this date, we're doing flu shots specifically for town employees. Um, and, you know, if, we, if you were concerned about uh, a surge time periods, you could have people sign up, you know, um, some people can come between seven and eight, eight, and nine, nine and 10. So you can eat and then you could probably just have one person because you wouldn't have, you know, if you schedule whatever, you know, 10 per hour, you know, people can just sign up for an hour and come then. And, you know, I think a tent idea is great and, and drive through. I think the, the most important thing is that, um, you know, there's social distancing and they're wearing masks and whether it's inside or outside or drive through, um, you know, whatever, whatever works from my, from my perspective is, is fine. Can yeah, we, that's a, can, that's a great point, Rick, especially the scheduling part for that social distancing aspect. Yep. Maybe we should table this and let G, uh, Laura get through her report. Yeah. yeah. I agree. Okay. And just a side note, though, before we do, um, usually it's open to, the, to everyone in town, not just town employees. So I'd have to know if you wanted to change that. Um, then I updated and formatted the minutes and sent those around <laughs> and put in any corrections that I had received and maintain the database for the Board of Health tracking minutes. I also have, I already told you about the food clinics. The only thing we had actually on the nurses report was just the um, COVID cases. We have had absolutely, luckily, nothing else. No foodborne illnesses, no West Nile, wow. no nothing. Wow. wow. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, okay. Thank you, Laura. Um, I, I, I want to ask about the um, COVID cases. You know, we talked about um, 
that there was a, a slight uptick in in cases and I, I have had a couple of questions I, mean, I don't know if others have had people were inquiring if we are able to share any information about um, sources of infection um, and I you know I would say we're, we're cautious about privacy but they would certainly would ask if there were any patterns if there's any information that we could share about what those cases were Laura do you have anything from that nurse's report um no, just what I already told you um, when, the other day when you asked that, just that it's, um, it was one family was three people and what two families were two people in the family. So that's why it went up. Yep. Thanks. Okay. Yep. That's it. Not. Yep. yep. Yeah. No, I just wanted to give you a chance to share that information with the other members of the board. Well, so that's good. not to say that that's good news, but that's good no. news. Yeah. <laughs> it is kind of, um, though, yeah, it is. It is kind of, I mean, you, you, that's you'd expect that that would happen in a household, and you just got right. uh, multiple households right. that it's happening yes. to. Yeah, and and exactly. the reason for getting that information is to make sure there's no clusters other outside of a right. family. Correct. Right. right. So that's yeah, so great. three families really made up the majority of the open cases that we have. Okay. Well, that's. that's as I said, good, not, not good news, yeah. but it is good to hear. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> we wish them that's well. It. Yes. <laughs> Okay, does anyone have any uh, other questions for Laura about items on the report? Nope. Laura, could you send that um, send that to me, uh, send it for, for written, you know me, I like to have a written um, a document to prod my memory, if you, if you wouldn't mind. I know you're going to send it to Jackie for the minutes, but if I could sure. have that, thank you. Okay. Um, So now our next is a big, big, big agenda item. So COVID, um, I attended command on Monday and um, we discussed the meeting schedule and agreed that, I'm just looking for my notes, agreed that um, they would alter um, that to every, uh, well, first and third Monday, um, they would do the Monday preceding our first and third Thursday meetings. So the 31st wasn't, or the, th the 31st wasn't the first Monday, it was actually the last Monday, but it's because our, our meeting was the first Thursday of the month and it's to, to, to meet in advance. Does that okay. make sense? Okay. Yep. So the next command meeting, so our next meeting is the 17th and then the command meeting would be the 14th. And, um, you know, so obviously if there needs to be, if, if anything changes and there needs to be more frequent meetings that they would increase that, but that, that seems like a reasonable schedule for, for the current circumstances. And um, that's 10, correct? It's at 11. 11. Yep. And so I offered, I to told them again, and I, and my offer still stands that I'm happy to be the liaison for the committee to command and, and do that Monday at 11 meeting. Um, I, Chief Burns, yeah, I said, you know, we haven't decided yet whether it might be a rotation. And he said, you know, that's fine either way. He said for continuity purposes, it, 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 it is sometimes better to have just one person mm -hmm. like the regular. Um, the other I'm piece- I'm happy to back up if you can't go. Thank you. The other piece would be that if, more of us are attending, we would need to post it. Um, so right. we have to commit that we're not, that it's a one person thing um, so that we don't run into any open meeting issues. Okay. Yep. Yep. And, uh, and I agree with the continuity part is, you know, so um, again, it, it doesn't matter who it is, but it's probably the, right. the, the smarter avenue to go down. Yep. I agree. Um, Carrie, if I can add that the last, I think, three command meetings, we're starting to take informal minutes. I'll just say notes. If it would be helpful for the Board of Health, where we're going to meet on a Monday and you're going to meet on a Thursday, we'd be happy to send those along in advance of your meeting. Yes. Nice. Oh, oh that would be great. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Thank you. That would be helpful, Bob. Thank you. Yeah, that would make the, the report. Really you're dying easy. to look if you go up on the select board packet if it's posted it's it's within the first 20 pages the last two minutes sets a minute okay but i'll send them tomorrow when i get around to it 
Um, let's see the other piece. So, so the just briefly the other business we've talked briefly about schools opening. Um, you know, staff are on site now, and students will start the week of the fifteenth. Um, is that hard and fast? Is that a definite date? Because the last thing I read that it was dependent upon getting enough staff and well, other this things. is just for um, pre-K and K and oh, I okay. think there's also okay. um, there's there's a lot of um, special ed that are going to be attendance too right yeah is that correct yeah okay okay yeah so yeah. and everybody else there I think the soft date is November oh November I don't, okay. th I don't think there's a date on it I think it's November is the okay. soft date for everyone to start back with a week on week off schedule Thank you for clarifying that's the info that. that I've that's the info I've gotten so far. Yeah. Okay. So there will be students on site starting on the 15th, but it's not all students. It's and it, as Kevin said, it's that small, small group K1, pre-K, pre-K, K, and one will be on site. Uh, I, I don't thought, think one is. I don't no. think one. No. Sorry. Okay. No, I think they're leaving it open for. I think pre they're going. Pre K and K, and then for kids that really need to be in attendance, that you j they just can't do it remotely. It's not going to work for them. Yep. So I think they're leaving it open. I think that's kind of an open ended um, screening process for that. But um, that, that's my understanding. Uh, you know, really high, higher need in uh, kids. The one on one kids, yeah. 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 Some kids just, you know, they just can't learn remotely. It's just, it's just not going to work for them. Right. Right. Um, I did get a field a question about um, flu vaccine and and how how um, how how would the receipt of flu vaccine by students be documented? Um, I guess that's come up as a, a, a question. I said, you know, it'll, it's a vaccine that will be tracked in by doctor's office in your blue book, and and the the you, you get a little sheet at your if you go to a flu clinic with your dose same thing if you go to, to a drugstore so um i thought it was interesting they were getting questions about that so they wanted to ask um and because it's Carrie, required this year say again it's a required vaccine for correct it hasn't been a brief this year. it has not but More. those forms already exist because sometimes police fire emts will need those or nurses that come in that need them for you know their job if they work someplace else. So we already have those pre-written forms. Right, right, right. Um, yeah. So um, yeah, the, it was it was it's on it's on people's minds. So that that was a question we got. Um, and then there was a little bit of discussion. There is um, a, a request out there, but I don't have a plan. I haven't seen a plan for it uh, for a. Possibly a drive-through um, clinic um, for COVID testing, and then also possibly a um, flu clinic for a local medical pediatric medical practice. So um, there's been a lot of discussion behind um, with with town staff trying to sort out what would the needs be to make sure that those things can be approved quickly. So I've gotten looped in on a couple messages. You said, were you going to ask something, Kevin? Sorry. No, no, okay. just taking it in. Yep. Um, so that was that was it for command. Um, right. So 14th and then the 28th, those would be the next meetings um, for command. Um, and then the next one I have was the mask and face covering order. I, I don't remember if you were with us, Rick. Um, the question came up of whether the face covering order that the Reading Board of Health passed needed to be rescinded um, because the um, governor's order went in effect uh, May 6th and whether we wanted to vote to rescind that. Um, I don't think it was a, we don't necessarily have to, but that it might be clean to do so. So I wanted to share the information and let us have a conversation about that. Is there any major discrepancy between the two orders? I, I think I, I think when I read them um, both, 
they're extremely similar. Um, yeah. And if anything, the governor might be, the governor's order might be a little bit more stringent. Yeah. It does seem like, um, you know, Reading was ahead of the curve, yeah. which is a good thing um, by a week or two uh, as compared to the state, but um, it might, I would agree, it might be cleaner to rescind it just so that we're, you know, if there are complaints or issues that come up, you know, we can, we can just go to one um, policy or order as opposed to trying to say, well, is this the, is this a complaint or a violation of the Reading versus the state um, when there's really no reason to have two at this point? Right. Yeah, I, I would agree with uh, Rick in that regard. I would just um, just make sure we word it um, very specifically so that, you know, we're rescinding the Reading Board of Health's um, order um, so we can, so the town can rely on the state's order that is implemented and currently still going. I, you know, just, I, I want it to seem like we're not saying, you know, take right. masks off in town. Uh, yeah. so just be very specific with the verbiage right. of the actual motion. I think, I think that's exactly what you're doing for us, Kevin. I love that. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> thank you. Um, I'm sorry, Paula, were you going to say something about the, no? Yeah. Okay. No. So the only thing I, I noticed that, that I wanted to take into account was that there are in businesses around town, a lot of people have a, a paper eight and a half by 11 printout that says per order of the mm -hmm. Reading Board of Health, you have to wear a face covering. I don't know if they made those signs themselves or if they were provided to them. And if we, and Laura, do you know? Laura, didn't we come up with the template for for all the um, for all the buildings in town? I thought we did. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, and then did could. you distribute those to make it available for for businesses or or? Um, or yeah, or, and at the beginning when we first went around, we brought them with us in case they didn't have them up or accessible, and we handed them out. Got it. If they needed them. Okay. So are there some so available the goal from was the state? That they would... Sorry. Sorry. No, go ahead. I, I was asking if anyone knows if there are some available to us from the state to be to replace them, the ones from Reading. Well, I, I again, I think maybe the uh, the simpler way to do it is just um, it's a great uh, point, Carrie, to bring up. I hadn't even thought about that. Uh, it was, feels like it was so long ago. Um, I, I, again, I think if you make the motion um, to the effect of the Board of Health, um, um, see, something to the effect that the Board of Health is- um, Defers, maybe? Defers yeah, it's deferring to the state. So then it's still a Board of Health okay. um, kind of um, yes. um, ban, right, or, or mandate. So to yep, speak, yes. so those signs would, effect, would still in effect be fine and then nobody has to do anything. Yes. At the end of the day, everybody's yes. kind of at this point trained and I, we don't really have to go in with signage okay. um, changes. Um, okay. So again, just kind of make it very specific um, and then it'll still be in effect that way. Yeah. Um, so Kevin, do you wanna take a, um, uh, do you wanna make a motion? Um, I, I will gladly give the mo give the language and then someone will just have to say so moved as a voting member um, <laughs> um, to to adopt it so to speak um, <clears throat> so I'd say I was gonna say I'd write this down I'm should type it up and put it down later um, and the uh, the date of the order was uh, uh, April 27th was the last date the board voted yeah. was April 27th yeah. okay yeah. Um, so I make a motion um, that the Reading Board of Health um, defers to the state mandate on mask wearing. Uh, see now, hold on. Now I don't know that date, that date's going to matter, Bob. If I if we're just deferring. What if it's the Reading Board of Health rescinds its order dated April twenty seventh and defers to the state policy as its own? I like that. Or adapts the state policy, yeah. Rescinds and defers to the state policy, right? And then we stay away from 
mask or face covering or any of that specificity because we're just we're deferring to it. Yep. Okay. Yep. Planning Board of Health rescinds the order of April 27th, defers to the state policy as of May 6th mm -hmm. as its own. Yeah, that sounds perfect. Yeah. Good. So do you need somebody to move that? Yeah, or someone second. Say, so moved. There you go. Okay. Um, so Just, now can I ask a question? Yes. Sorry, can I ask a question? Do we need to have them take down the signs that they have or can they continue to leave them up? Like do we no. need to go around to every location and make them take it down or is it okay no. to leave them up? Yeah, no, no. and you're, you're sorry, you can't see us shaking our heads, Laura, I forget. <laughs> um, <laughs> we're all used to seeing each other and we're all answering you, but you can't see us. Um, no, you don't. Um, okay. we, we don't, this, this, the way this has been, um, phrased and, and organized, it would not, it would avoid having to do that. Very good. Okay. Okay. I just wanted to know. Thank you. Uh-huh. Um, okay. So roll call. Carrie? Yes. Oh, did somebody second it? Oh. I thought I heard someone throw I it out. I did too. Maybe not. S second. All right. Okay. Roll call. Carrie? Yes. Holly? Oh, yes. And we're done. <laughs> yep. Um, okay, thanks. That was easy. Uh, so then the next two items, I, I separated them because they're slightly different. It's civic function permits and recreation permits. They're slightly different they're for, from the board's perspective. Right now we have a review process. Uh, they come from different places. The forms look a little bit different. Um, we've had a couple of civic function permits. I think the one um, most recent was a request for um, the Reading Community Singers to do music distribution, just like they were doing um, town warrant distribution earlier this spring. So um, I reviewed that and Laura and I reviewed it and approved that. Um, the other things that came through were um, events that then were canceled. Um, for recreation permits, that continues to be pretty busy. Um, and let's see, um, I think I reviewed seven last week. Um, and there are four kicking around between Laura and I and recreation this week. So, uh, Rick, I know um, you had shared that draft form, that form and the, the process and that I thought it was great. Laura started using it. Um, I don't know if others have had an opportunity to to, to see that. Um, and, we, and Laura, maybe you could send to the board just as examples, um, the, the they have most it. recent, right? So if you could, just so they can see how it's being used and- Right, um, they have it. Oh, they have it. Okay. I have to look for it. Do you have, sorry, do, do they have a, a a, um, I, I was Rick gave us Rick, Rick gave us the flow, the form, yes. and yes. an example of it on. Hold on, let me yes. find when he sent it. I didn't know whether um, the board had to approve that flow in that form or whether Laura could just start using it. Um, and Laura did send it out a couple days ago. Um, yep. It's just a, a cover sheet that kind of makes it clear what's going on. And the flow would sort of have, um, you know, Laura interact with the requesting um, organization to make sure that it was uh, oh, consistent with a guideline. Yeah, I um, And so the idea would be that if, in, you know, it, it seemed like it's a, it's a terrible burden for the chair to have to go through seven, eight of these. Um, whereas if if these were um, pre-processed with Laura, the form completed, sent a couple days in advance of the meeting, you, you know, and if Laura's recommending it be approved, it should just be approved. Um, so that was the idea behind that. So what, what got sent this out, what Laura sent out was a draft uh, cover sheet. Um, yep an example of how we would do it with one of the requests that came in. 
and then the and then, then out just a simple flow. And right. I do want to point out that, um, and I know everybody's been talking a lot lately about how there's too many Board of Health meetings and you guys are trying to streamline things that are done. The DPH call last Friday, they actually indicated that they, that's not something Laura, that we're even- Laura, can I stop you for yeah. a second? I want, I, would have, was gonna, I want to raise that, but I wanted to get through this conversation first and then talk about that. Yes, absolutely. Um, Laura, what I, was, what I was trying to ask if you could do is send out, say the, the two most recent ones that we've been working on so, so folks can see it in, in, in real time, see how it's been used. That, that was what I was asking for. Um, so that's, that's the first piece. Um, and thank you for doing that work, Rick. That was- um, Yeah, that was great. I got confused because you said Rick had sent it out and I didn't get anything from him. Got I it. didn't realize it was caught and lost. Yeah. Yes. I had seen it and thought it was a great idea. So, um, because we had agreed our process would be that the chair would review with the agent, I, I, I didn't consider, you know, whether the board wanted to review and, and approve. I figured we, Laura started using it and it, it was useful and certainly we can change it if, if folks had a, a need. Um, I love the idea of kind of keeping track of it. Yeah. Um, so that's all good. But then there are two kind of wrinkles. Um, the first is that the ones that I've been reviewing are they're 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 kind of variable in their um their quality and it's a it's a it's a little bit of a complicated review process they're not all following the same format they're um omitting different things sometimes they're you know easy nuances sometimes they're not uh, one that I reviewed this afternoon um, had um, information saying that um, people could test out of quarantine or isolation. If they had a negative test, then they wouldn't have to isolate anymore and they could come back in to play. And that might be the case for a private organization, but that's not the guidance that's enforced for the general public. So, so they're a little... Um, um, variable. I, I'll just leave it at that. Um, so that's, that's one piece. It does make it a, a complicated review. And then the other piece is that, um, as Laura said, um, on the local public health call that was held on Friday, the state, um, it's actually the Office of Environmental and, and Energy Affairs, EEA, is who governs all of these sport things. They confirmed that um, boards of health are not required to review in advance, review and approve in advance. That's not mm. a requir requirement. The requirement is that if there is a complaint, um, boards would then go, you know, uh, they would they would be investigated. From a workflow and a work burden standpoint, I think that that's great. From a protecting health and safety standpoint. Yeah. I, I have a problem with it. I have my concerns and I might have less concern if I hadn't seen such variability in these plans. So I'm, I, it's a dilemma and I'm not quite sure how to approach it. And sorry, I guess I'll just say the, the third piece is, um, I was wrong, there's three pieces. The third piece is that the responsibility for, um, for following the guidelines and having effective guidance in, in place for your activity falls on the organizer and on the, um, it's both the organizer and the sponsoring organization. So in some in instances where it's recreation programs, the responsibility falls back on the recreation department. Um, so they would be reviewing, not just bouncing it to health for review. So it's kind of a, what we say, sticky wicket. Um, <laughs> anybody have any, um, Question so, on what you, I said? Yeah. To, can you give me the uh, the exact language that the, the state was saying that we we don't have to approve? Do you know exactly what was said or how it was said and phrased? Yeah, I can look. So there's no so there is no requirement that boards review advance. I will look and get the notes in, in just a second. There is no communities can always choose to be more 
they can do more than the state says. Um, but yeah, there, it was a it's in response to an FAQ, and um, they, the documentation for those calls is those um, is on that NHOA website that I shared with you all that has the um, notes from those local health calls. So just give me a second. Okay, if it's not that readily easy to pull up, don't worry about it. I was just uh, curious to hear the exact um, language that they use for that. Yep, hang on. Sorry, I'm in the notes. Just give me a second for how. So that is strange because I don't see it in these. Oh, because it wasn't Friday; it was Tuesday. Um, oh. it was, sorry, date time is time right. that means nothing, and okay. those, those minutes haven't been posted yet. I'm sorry. Okay, um, that's okay. It was nine. It was on Tuesday that 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 comment was made. Um, the, the Friday they they um that that office wasn't actually present on the local health call, but um, Tuesday. So that, you know, that we, was their guidance, yeah. We, we use the term permit, um, recreational permit, civic function permit. Yep. And so when I think of permit, I think that there's a piece of paper we give them, but maybe that's not true. Maybe, so, so is what you and, and you know, Eleanor before you and um, have been doing is really reviewing and giving a kind of verbal okay, or is it literally a permit, just like the building department would give a permit for a construction or something? Because it seems like if we're giving a piece of paper, um, then you have to review it. But if it's just, if what we've been doing is having them run, run it by us, um, so I'm a little confused about the terminology of a permit. Yep. So we don't issue the permits. They are permits, but they're not issued by us. But we are now part of the review process to the, the checking boxes that has to happen in order for a permit to be issued. Okay. So the recreational department issues the permit. Correct. For rec and, and what about for other types of functions? Um, I don't know what, um, what that might be, but... That um, comes from the this town is manager's civic, office, like what's... right? Is that through the town manager's office? Yes. Yeah, the civic town function manager. permit comes through my office. Okay. Yep. Okay. So we're acting in a consulting role currently. Correct. Correct. Okay. Yeah. And as I said, so yeah, I mean, there's the question of when we say the board of health approves. Um, and that's the language, right? It, it, health agent approves board reviewed, um, you know, there's a burden of making sure that they're following it. I mean, and I, ha I mean, these are, there, there have been really some, some challenging things like referring to guidance, the guidance that was issued in, on July 7th, when there's more recent guidance that was issued in August, um, sometimes mentioning masks, sometimes mentioning no contact, sometimes not. Um, you know, these are all being pulled together by different people, business owners and volunteers, and they're doing the best that they can. Um, and it's not always, they're not always getting quite the right spot. So I'm, I'm concerned about us approving something. Um, and I'm, I, but I'm also, I, I don't want, you know, I, certainly we don't want to be the, um, um, I don't. We don't. It feels like we've been slowing down the process to, to some people. I don't. I don't quite know what the time frame is. But the, the requests come in pretty fast and furious. Um, I mean, I feel like we need to prioritize health and safety. Um, but yeah, it seems that we're closing the blind door after the horse is out. You know, if we, I. That's yeah. just my perspective. I don't know. 
So you, you okay. seem to be on a conflict between this is this is this is really great for these organizations that's already set up and but wait a minute I found some discrepancies I'm not uh, that I wouldn't have just passed right along right is no. that kind of what I'm what I'm hearing Terry? okay I would say that of the 10 that I've reviewed I think and Laura can correct me but at least five at least half of them I have bounced back and asked for revisions um because the issues were you know significant enough that it wasn't just don't forget um so 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 it's, it's a difficult thing the other the only other way you could get around having you know the best of both worlds is to push out a template to um from the board of health to all these organizations say here's the boxes that you all need to check off um and yeah. and have at it um, so when it comes in to you it's in a nice neat package consistent package where it's very easy to just go down and say okay all these boxes and check they're good to go um, yep. that's really your only way kind of around Agreed. that type of issue to keep it still streamlined now this didn't used to be the order of business prior to covid correct correct this um, is a yes article. yeah yeah correct there was i mean the, the only the only thing that came before board of health or in this case laura was camps um, you know, rec, you know, having a bit, uh, you know, baseball, softball, field hockey, these, these things were, were, it was not of our purview at right. the time. Right. The, you know, the guidelines that come out around, let's say the recreational, um, sport, sporting stuff, you know, are several pages long yes. and can be confusing to someone who's not reading them all the time. And um, I like Kevin's idea of, of a checkbox, yeah. but that would require sort of synthesizing or dumbing down, I'm not sure what, taking those complex <laughs> guidelines and putting right. them to something that, you know, is in a box which could raise more, I would be concerned it raises, that, that's a hard piece of work to do, and it would, yeah. it might, um, you know, issues would come up just like we had with the uh, hockey team and the face-offs versus that, you know, there's, there's nuances, you know, that it's just hard to, to be, to dumb down, you know, to a simple few statements. So it's even worse than that, Rick, because uh, not only if we're tr going to try to generate that, this, this piece, this document will be out about six weeks from now and, and <laughs> finalized. Right? Right. It's, uh, it's just, it, it, it we, yeah. We've tried to go this route before, and, and all we did was just keep, kept chasing our tails around, and then we just gave up and said, this isn't working. And that took about six weeks uh, to get to that point, one, at one stint along the way, and something else um, in regards to something else. But maybe there's something that the state already has. Maybe the wheel has already been created in, in this avenue, and that would be something that then the board can simply say, we approve this form uh, format uh, for making sure um, the, the items that are most important to the border adhered to. Yep. And maybe there's not, and, and maybe, you know, it, maybe it just comes back to do, you're going to have to do it the hard way um, and just Kevin? keep reviewing them. Yes. The state does not have it because the state's not requiring us to review them. But the state has what their requirements are, correct? Yes. Right. Yes. Yeah. It has a whole list, so they but must, it doesn't have like a form to follow or anything. Yeah. Of course they don't. No. <laughs> and, and, and Sorry. Say, the, the revisions that they've issued since um, in July, you know, every, the subsequent revisions have, have made it easier. You know, they're using some color coding and they're trying to be be, um, be sensitive to, to people's use of it, but it is still complicated. It's, um, and I think it's nine pages. Um, <sighs> Oh. Because there's low risk, medium risk, and high risk sports, yeah. and then there's if you're engaging in you know level, level one, one, level, level two. two, level <laughs> three play, um, you know. So I mean, it's it's it is. Um, I do think that they have done a nice job of distilling what was pretty dense before, um, mm. but it's it's still a little involved. Um, so you know, I, 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 go ahead, Rick. I, I would, I don't know, I feel like um, I would err on the side of still reviewing them. It might be one solution could be if, if the permits are generated by, you know, 
the town or the recreational department that really our role is really to look at the proposed protocol, point out A, B, and C should be done differently and pass that on to the recreational department or the, or the town manager department um, and say, this is it. As opposed to feeling like we need to get into um, a lot of detail or interact. I mean, I don't know, you know, it, but, but just kind of not signing off on anything, not reviewing anything, um, given the variability and the lack of compliance that we've seen, seems like we wouldn't be totally doing our job, but that would be my, my take on it. Does it make sense that we all throw eyes at it and put our two cents in? Does well, that help or make it worse? That makes it worse. Yeah. <laughs> to, be, to be, yeah, to be, to be, things. to be, I'm, I'm not trying to be mean, but that definitely makes it worse. The more, yeah. you know, I think you need to drive this through one mechanism um, yep. for consistency sake. I, I, I agree with that. Um, okay. and, and I've been trying, Laura and I have been working together, trying to figure out some process flow. Um, and would it help yeah. if I took some of it on? Well, so let's, uh, I'm wondering if we could, um, so I really, Laura, if, if you, if, like, this is part of why I wanted to have you send out a couple of the most recent ones to the board so that they could see what I was I, talking about. I did, about. I just sent one out. Oh, let me go look yeah. for it. Just so they can see, and it, you know, I mean, it doesn't have to be looked at now, but I, wa I wanted to, to, to give an example, and it, each one I, looks very different, right, Laura? You know, what do you want right. to say I did, um, <laughs> I did, I would like to add, though, that some of them were from pre- you guys that um, Eleanor was working on. So some of them, the code, everything's changed too on top of it yeah. because they're so old and they hadn't been approved that they, the guidance had changed. Is that right? Because the ones that I, I had, I thought I cleared Eleanor. Yep. I, I cleared the, the ones that were outstanding as of the 17th last weekend. And then the ones I've been working on have been received as of the 20th. So, like so 24th and 25th right so last weekend so that was monday so that's like i get it then send them back to um shannon and shannon and jenna, why am I jenna thank you i sent yep. them back to them on monday so they were so the guidance had changed from early in the month to the middle of the month it's changing every day the last guidance change was in July. Um, well, no, that's wrong. Sorry, you're right. See, it, sorry, July 24th and then August 13th. I, I didn't think we had anything that was, um, had, I, I thought we had cleared. I'm, I'm worried I, about- I saw some changes. I'm worried about the, I'm, I'm asking about this because I'm, I'm worried that I was misunderstanding a backlog, Laura, because I understood that I cleared everything that was from earlier in August and that now we're kind of mid August and on. That's what I'm, that's why I'm worried. Right. Yeah. At, yeah. No, today we were working on mid August on. Yeah. I think the one we, the oldest one we were working on today was August 25th or 27th, yep. something like that. Yep. Okay. So, you know, I mean that, the, the, that guidance has been out for a couple of weeks anyways. Um, and it, it, these are almost over because the season's, there's not going to be that many more things that start. Half of these things are going all the way until October 9th. Okay. Is that right? That's helpful to know. I, I don't know that. Okay. So it's sounds... Let me ask... Yeah. Let me ask one more comment. Is, Laura, um, are, are these that you're getting, do you feel like you're comfortable enough to be able to compare the submitted protocols to the uh, established guidelines and directly um, provide that feedback to the organization and to the permitting department. Um, and, you know, do you feel comfortable doing that directly? And maybe then the chair or the committee, you, you just CC or, is that not possible? I'm, I'm looking at Carrie and, she, and she's nodding. Anna, what do you think? 
Laura. Laura. I, I what I whatever you guys want. I, mean, I, I can do it. I think it's been a little challenging, Laura, and I think some of that is to do with the different formats that things come in. Mm. Is that is that a fair description, Laura? Um, I, 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 there's a lot of. I, it's, it's a, I don't know. It's up to you guys. Um, I mean, I just, I think this is something that this, it seems like it has benefited from having two sets of eyes in, 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 in the instant, in the ones that I've been doing since Eleanor stepped down, at least. I'm sorry, I'm just letting somebody join our, I just realized there's somebody joining our meeting. Hello, welcome. Um, sorry that you were waiting in the in the waiting room. Did you have a, a, a question for us, John? No. Okay, great. Welcome. Um, okay. Sorry. So, so, so I think we're, it sounds like we're left with either um, we're left with either the chair continuing to review them, having been pre-processed by Laura, or we rotate uh, the responsibility. I guess those would be the two options. Is it? Is there any other option? And that we would just be. Do do most do most of us agree that we wanted we want to do a, a review or, um, I mean that's what it, my sense is, but as opposed to just. Yeah. Waiting for a complaint. Correct. It, it sounded like it was necessary. Um, let me ask a question for uh, Carrie and Laura. Um, Laura, when these things come in, are you are you flagging some items before you send it along to Carrie to say, "Just got this. This particular piece may be of concern." Um, how how exactly are you just are you just sending it directly off to her, and then you kind of both are collaborating on it? How how is it working? Well, right they now? they were coming in, and Eleanor wanted to do them. And then Rick created a form. So I'm just transposing the information really from the, the application onto the form right now. And then okay. today, Carrie said I could start inputting more, giving more feedback. Oh, okay. I didn't realize that was, that was I, I had a different understanding. That's helpful to know, Laura. I, I didn't understand that that was what you were, um, what, what, so, okay. So the reason I, I, I asked the question, it, it may be helpful for whoever the chair is, uh, Laura, is, is the format I think is a, is a great idea because it keeps it consistent for um, the chair to, to look at it and, and see it in a consistent form. I think that's really always uh, really important to have. Um, but along with that, it would it'd probably be good for you to send out your thoughts on, hey, I'm flagging this, this item or this is lacking this item. Um, Kevin, this you format. know I love to give my thoughts. I know you do. I'd love to. Yeah, well, I'd uh, love to. So I, I, sorry, I think it would benefit. I think it would really benefit the chair, and I think it would it would speed up the process um, for that review process because then it's like, oh yeah, you're right. It's missing this. This item isn't sufficient enough at, in its current form, um, and, and I think it would go back very quickly in that format. Yeah, I, I and I'm I, I understood that Laura that you were reviewing and flagging for me with with I you know I think it needs comments or you know or corrections or or not I did not realize that you had a different understanding of how we were working this so um well I, Eleanor didn't want me really like she wanted to do all the corrections so I thought that's still what everybody wanted but I more than happy to throw my two cents in <laughs> you you can't see us <laughs> but Carrie oh, no, nope right, nope is right. that, nope I don't want to. <laughs> I want to do any extra. No, well, <laughs> I shouldn't well, say extra. That's 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 an unfair unfair term. Um, right. I I just think I think that probably would would work better for our, for you all is just to have it come across with, is is this the format that Rick came up with? Here are the notes um, from Laura as to how she how she's reading through it and what it has, what it doesn't have, and what it should have. Can I ask? That's a good. 
clarifying question, Rick? Actually, Laura and I were talking about this. We wanted to talk about that form. Um, was it your intent that with the form that 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 the information be cut and pasted from the submission into the form, or was it your intent that that it would that the the, the it would be use the use the guidance dated eight twenty four to review CDC GPH guidance uh, CDC. Right. There, so in the form. Um, there was some basic information about when it received, what the organization yeah. is. Then there was a piece about what the what the activity is, because some of these, are, like I mentioned knuckle bones, I have no idea what they do. Exactly. Um, so there would be some description of that. And then there was a there was an item that was this is the these are the guidelines that the health agent and the and the board is using yep. to to assess this protocol. Yep. Then there was a section for the health agent to fill out. Um, and what I was thinking according to the flow was, Laura, Laura gets it, she does the review. She finds these four things not consistent with the guidelines. She would have a conversation with the organization say these four things, are you gonna change your protocol, change your protocol, send it back uh, and fix it. And if they didn't, you know, she would she would put down on that form. Then um, these two things are still outstanding and not corrected, and and that would go to let's say the board chair, for instance. And yep. so the board chair could then just focus on, you know, those two or three things, not feeling like you had to review the whole thing. Um, and you you could, but at least you know what what the essence is. So a lot of this work would be prepped by. Laura, and then I think I review, um, but that was the idea behind it. Okay. Thank you for clarifying. Yeah, because I know there was, we were having some, we were trying to sort out whether it was to, whether it was intended to cut and paste from the submission, which, which felt a little, no, it, no, it go together. So it didn't, it felt like that was extra, extra effort that Laura was putting in that maybe she didn't need to. So yeah, no, find that great. Okay, so we will continue to review. Um, Laura, you'll you know review and and share with me the 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 um, results, and we'll keep passing it back and forth, um, or passing it so that we can get them approved and back to recreation. Um, okay, just to be clear, we so still have three that are open, correct? Um, we have so I returned one to you. I don't, I don't want to go into. To, are we going to? Do you want to talk about exactly which ones? Or no, no. I just want a number of how many are open. It should be um, the three, correct? I I defer to. I approved one this morning because I wanted to clean up yep. a, a backlog. I sent one back to you this afternoon um, with some okay. I'll, clarifying points. I'll find it. And then, um, and you would ask me a question because I used an acronym and you didn't understand it. I broke my own. So we have, I think we have three that are open. Okay. Okay. All right. So just to be clear for Laura's sake, moving forward, the process is it comes into Laura. She inputs it into the, the form that Rick came up with flags anything that she sees along the way there's a little section in that form that she can put in her own comments um, in regards to uh, what she feels needs to be in there or needs to be changed about it goes and then uh, rick your intention sounds like at that point she should then go not even go to the chair yet go back to the organization say i know the chair is going to have an issue with these points you need to rectify them before i pass along for final approval is that is that the process you you envision or going think, to the chair first and then back to that's the organization. Rick, you're right, Kevin. Thank you. That's what Rick just described. One. But I that's what Rick described. But I would like to amend that process based on what we've been going through. I would like it to have Laura review, and that's what we were operating on. Laura reviews, emails yeah. it to me, says this is ready. I've you know I've looked at it. Here's the here's the thing. I can scan it quickly as we've said and say I great or ooh notice this. Um, and, and part of the reason for that was to try and minimize um, any back and forth between another department. So um, that's what I would like to do, at least for, for now. 
So, but do you, in that process, Carrie, do you want Laura to already flag those items as she, before she sends it along to you? Yes, I want them reviewed. Right? Yes, they're reviewed. Right, it's so, reviewed you, so you, it's whittled down to, issues. Yes. Right. rather than you looking at 30 items that they have, you're looking at a couple items that Laura has signaled, has signaled out and said, this isn't in there, this isn't sufficient, and it is in there. Stuff like, I'm is scared. that... I'm still scanning. I'm still scanning that this is what I'm saying. I'm actually doing a second quick review. But what I would right. like is that Laura's review is informing me that she's already, you know, caught it. So I can just do Got a it. quick okay. kind of end line and say, oh, yes, I agree. Or, oh, you know. Yeah, right. No, no, yeah. no, no. I just want to make sure for, for Laura's standpoint, she understands moving forward what, it, what, what exactly um, she's going to do. So it sounds like she gets the permit. She's inputting it into the form. She's reviewing it and, yep. and raising any flags that there might be in it and then passing it along to you for, for final review. Yep. Does that make sense, Laura? Yes. Great. <laughs> okay. Um, and then I'll just say, I don't want to be belabor this, but um, <laughs> if anybody, <Blake>. Laura, <laughs> um, Paula, you know, you said if you wanted to, Takes one. If you'd like to, um, you know, take take a week, um, that's fine with me. If others would like to see kind of what we're what we're getting, that's fine. Um, I I don't want to hog them. <laughs> I don't want to hog them. But okay, all right. Happy to. Okay. Let's work that out. All right. There. Thank you. Um, drive through clinics. Um, I, I guess I thought that we might have gotten further along in in this, or there might have been further progress in the t in the on the through the town. Um, there is a request out there for a local medical provider um, to set up a drive-through testing site. Um, it hasn't actually made it to us yet, but there's been some discussion. I alluded to this already. There's been some discussion of you know it, it came up a command. What can health do? Um, I don't think we have a lot that, that we, we absolutely believe that it should be expedited, but um, <clears throat> we don't have a lot of sway over zoning. Um, so I, I think that's that's continuing to proceed. Bob, was there anything else about that that you wanted to share? Um, I can I can think of two. There was one on Walkersbrook and one on Haven Street. Which one are you thinking of? I was thinking of the one on Walkersbrook. Okay. Um, yeah, I haven't heard anything since we met on Monday, um, but I think you're right. I really don't think the it's a health organization. They ought to know what they're doing. I don't think the Board yeah. of Health has to worry. Uh, yeah. The one on Haven Street, I've heard nothing else. I'm not sure they were going to continue. Got they were it. just kicking the tires. Got and, it. You know, Walkersbrook was a lot more conducive to some sort of traffic and drive-in than Haven Absolutely. Street. Absolutely. Right. Okay. Yes, so I had had that on the agenda, uh, anticipating that there might be something to come, but um, it's still in the works, I guess. There's been a bit of email talking about how to make things happen, but okay. Um, remote I'll check with Greg Burns and just ask and see if he's heard anything because, um, you know, it seemed like it was really important on Monday and then I didn't hear anything, so I don't know what that means. Mm -hmm. There's definitely been a lot of conversation um, that they just have kept. You haven't been on that email thread, but I, okay. I've been on parts of it. There's a lot, lot, a lot of talk happening. Julie Mercier and and um, Ray Miaras and and like so. Sorting it through. I'm sorry, so, I missed it all. Not. <laughs> no, you're not. Um, <laughs> just, just for you know, just for sheer volume. That's all. They're lovely people. It's nice messages. Um, but. Um, okay, so remote learning and enrichment programs. Um, this, and I think we sent content out to you all. The state had expedited um, approval processes for remote learning enrichment programs that would be set up to accommodate childcare needs for folks, given the kind of different schedules that are out and about. Um, and this is actually there's a there's a piece that's health, but this has a lot to do with other things as well. Um, they they the state has made it very easy. Uh, they want to make it very simple for these kinds of organizations to open up. I know that there was a proposal for possibly one in um, kind of um, 
in the old Joe Gold's gym complex, I think was what I was told back behind um, Market Basket and the like. Yeah, that's going to CPDC next week. I believe it's on the 9th. I'm not certain. Okay. Um, and it, it was, it's, it's fast tracked. And so, you know, we share the guidance. I don't know if they, folks have had the opportunity to, to look at it, if they have questions or concerns. Um, it's a great concept. Um, I think it, it fills a need for the community. And I Absolutely. think- Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm really happy to hear that somebody's trying to do something in, in, in our community. And I think we just you know, need to make sure that they are um, taking care. And I don't know, would this, it's not a camp, right? There are three categories of these. There's, there's some camps, like say the Y or other organizations that have said, we're gonna stay open. We're gonna extend our camp from it. And then that impacts Laura, because she's got a, okay that um and then there are these pop-up kinds of um places that there's no it's not a child care facility and there's no review and approval process for health per se right laura no there is because they're going to be offering lunch is my understanding is that incorrect ah, lunch so so if they're offering lunch they're going to require an inspection and a, per, a permit a permit review I have to know what they're making, how they're making it at the facility. So it's not, so if they offer lunch, it changes it into a whole different thing, but it is not a camp, which is better. Unless they label it as a camp, or then if they label it as a camp, then that opens up a whole new, a whole new permitting project yes. process. And then we need medical forms and we need the nurse to review all the medical forms. So it yes. all depends how they actually end up labeling their application, which is triggers what I'll need from them. Yes. So it's kind of a, we're keeping our eye on it at this point. Um, but yes, the food, thank you, Laura, the food piece, that's right, would um, would impact the wood union inspections. So. But I haven't seen anything yet. I just got that yeah. they were doing the food. They were doing lunch. I haven't seen any paperwork has anyone no we're all shaking nope. our heads nope. um, but nope. i think nope. what it bugs, it, it'll go to um cpdc next week there's a, a question about that use um yeah it's because of a zoning issue um it's yeah. as i understand it it's a certain legal term and you know they can't unreasonably withhold permission i think is the term yes Another, supposed to approve it but they can put conditions on it um, my my last understanding and, and things do change is they are not serving food at that one. Okay. If if people want to bring their own snacks, they're allowed to do that. They are not serving any food. Okay. Is there a different one, Bob, that they're serving food at? Because when I was talking to Paul Jackson today, we were discussing the food aspect and how it would trigger uh, no, health. I don't department. know because again, I might be four days behind, and, and that <laughs> thing has evolved. So it, it could be the same one. I heard that there was a another business in town uh, that was going to offer this. So I, I don't know for 100% sure. Okay. And I just want to ask, um, you're distinguishing from um, a family with a single family home that might offer. Oh, right. Pause. That's different. Okay. There's the, the pause, pause yeah. too. Yeah. Yes. Okay. That was the third piece. There's these pop-ups, there's pods that are families agreeing to pool together, and then there's the if a facility chose to extend their camping right. camp permit. Um, yeah, and pods are, are fairly, um, it's, it's an agreement among private It's a private, issues. yeah, it's just yeah. a private, it's a private issue, yeah. Yeah, so. Yeah, my peers are treating it, and I think this is in the in the executive order. Um, families, not people, families of five or less. Right. Are yeah, that's what I've eight, seen. I guess I'll say. But yeah. if they go over that number, and of course they never would say they would. <laughs> and I also understand in Reading that this has been going on since March anyways. Yeah. That you know, when you see your neighbor has two kids and there's 10 bicycles there every day, you kind of figure it out. Right. 
No, I think that that's true. I think that families did kind of creatively agree to pod together for a variety of reasons. And, um, you know, this is the state in this instance, catching up with it and sort of acknowledging it as a, as a alternative. Um, so, yeah. Okay. Um, so then on, so then moving on other, I had other was, and at that point I wanted to put in flu clinics, uh, which we already had a fairly robust conversation about. And I like, Laura, maybe we could ask you if you could, um, for the next meeting, if you could come and we could talk about a flu clinic plan for the town. I, uh, you know, how would you modify the plan that was done last year? Is that okay? You, you mean where we, where and how? You mean on the common, like we were talking about earlier? Yep. Yep. Okay. Any other members want to know anything else while we're asking her to come talk about flu clinics? No. Okay. Um, and then the other one was vaccine clinics because there are some beginning rumblings of, of noise of states should start to prepare for delivery of vaccine. Um, and Laura, I don't know, um, I think, well, I don't know. Would your flu clinic setup be the same for a vaccination clinic? It should be, yes. It should yeah. be set up the same as any emergency dispensing site where we yep. can flow in and flow out. Yep. And Do you um, think that the town would receive flu vaccine to distribute? Sorry. Um, do you think that the town, uh, the town of Reading would receive, I'm sorry, um, virus vaccine to distribute? Or no I, one knows? Nobody knows. I mean, that's, that's the um, model that towns have been asked to prepare for. Um, you know, consistent with receipt of the strategic natural stockpile, you're supposed to prepare for that. Um, and every town is supposed to have their own plans to receive, whether that is how the um, distribution would work, okay. we don't know. So, um, so is my understanding that the first rounds would, would are, they're targeting those two specific um, disciplines, correct? correct? Uh, so, correct. okay. So yeah. that would... Uh, the, my question would raise, so now Laura has to ask credentials upon somebody come walking the door to get it. it, it doesn't, my guess would be they're going to probably set us up with a mechanism. I, I shouldn't, I shouldn't make this assumption. It's really, I really should. <laughs> We're talking but about the state here. <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me rephrase this. My hope would be that they would set us up with some kind of mechanism to, to um, ad administer them. Um, under those guidelines, if they're not going to have it open for everybody at the onset, right? Um, but like you said, Kevin, we, we just don't know yet. They, Kevin, the only thing that, that would guidance. make sense is if the distribution went through our medical provider for medical needs, but yep. then it could go through the town. And this is the first yep. blush again for the uh, essential workers and the first responders. Correct. Right. So, right. We we, so we are not going to be able to screen medical conditions. No. Exist no, we can screen employees, like right. you just said. Right. Yep. Ex so the ex I'll tell you what the existing protocol is, and I'm just going to see if I can pull it up. Um, there's a a lovely um, tiered tier strategy for vaccine dispensing, um, and I I had the opportunity to be an evaluator on a couple of tabletop exercises in another emergency preparedness region in January and February, and they were testing this um, protocol, and it was, um, so here, the tiers were defined, and the communities uh, had information about the rough number of people in each of the tiers, and then the tabletop exercise was for the communities to talk about how it would work to do those, um, yeah, here it is. Um, I'll just share my screen and show you. Um, so this is current, where am I? Too many windows open. Um, well, you're pulling up the window, can I add one thing? 
please. I did talk to our uh, emergency preparedness group actually today, um, actually yesterday, I'm sorry, um, in regards to setting up the flu clinic for a drill just in case the vaccine does come to us so that we can do it with our emergency yep. preparedness group. Yep. So it's something that I already reached out to them about, just about setting it up as far as dispensing and what we could do is we have a call down and it does include um, fire department and a few other entities. So everyone from the state through our group would be at the event. And is so is that a, when you say is that a regional approach, Laura? Uh, so that yes. you, you so there would be one regional location agreed upon, and then all communities would staff it under like a mutual aid agreement. We would have our own, but all everyone in our in our group would come help. So and the then we would help them. Would be, so scheduling would be staggered so that um, each community. We could all help each other. Yeah. Okay. So this is just so, kind of a. Yeah. So no one, um, they don't have anything set up yet because of only person that asked so far. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, I mean, the, the tabletop exercise was really interesting. And, and what I'm sharing on my screen right now is just an example of what tiers what tiers would look like. This is the Homeland Security version, but um, in the exercise, so you can see here, they prior um, health care and community support services. So they um, say public health personnel and pharmacists were considered a, a high a tier one group as were public safety, fire, EMS, um, and the like. And each community was given an opportunity to kind of prioritize their um, who they felt like were um, need, needed vaccination. The purpose being to get numbers of um, how many people you might need to be um, vaccinating in a, in a scenario where you received vaccine. Mm -hmm. So it, it's actually a, a pretty well thought out process. Um, you know, and you start puzzling them with the questions of, well, how do I find out like um, pregnant women were a priority population. How do I find out the pregnant women? And you know, that's a little tricky. How would you identify that? But um, yeah, there's, there's, there's a fair amount of work out there and I'm, I'm glad to hear, Laura, that you've already talked with the EP group. Um, and I think that'll be, you know, using a, using a flu clinic as a drill is, is a time-honored way of, of practicing the plan. So nice, nice job thinking about that. Thanks. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, okay. Um, Board of Health vacancy. So I attended the select board meeting last Tuesday. Um, they uh, agreed that they would contact folks that had previously expressed interest and the VASC was going to interview them. We talked about the change meeting schedule, you know, shifting to Thursday evenings and um, yeah, they were hopeful that that would, would work out. They agreed that, understood that it was an important piece. I, I understand that what happened afterwards, um, that there was agreement that the, the opening needed to be posted, um, that we wouldn't, wasn't sufficient to just use the list of folks who had applied maybe because of time. Um, <laughs> Kevin's Kevin's friend is letting us know we've been we've been on for a while. <laughs> he, I love seeing him. You don't 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 wave him away from me. Um, <laughs> um sorry. Um right, so the so the opening's been posted. The VASC, I think, is supposed to to meet with candidates for full and associate positions, and I believe the board will be taking it up at their September, and I, I know actually I confirmed with Ann Landry this morning that they'll be taking it up at their September 22nd meeting, at which point they would put um, candidates forward, the board would vote to accept, and then whomever is accepted would need to be sworn in by the town clerk and they could participate in the, um, our next meeting will be October 1st. Um, that's our way our schedule works. So. Uh, if we stay with that every, you know, first and third Thursday, that's the way the schedule would work. 
anyone wants to any, any questions bob do you want to clarify anything for us no question no i think the vask uh, the vask is going to be asked to meet uh the week of the 14th okay. so not next week but the week after and then yeah, everything else you said is is exactly right okay so somebody else is going to join us um i told them that we were we were a great group to join so <laughs> We're a whole well, lot of fun. A whole lot so of fun. So keep it, keep in mind. Somebody else may not be joining us um, right away. Um, my my hope would be that Rick gets gets appointed to a full voting member, therefore Agreed. vacating his his current seat, which would then need to, I think believe need to be posted for 15 days before that could be filled. Is that the way that Under has that, to work? I think we've actually just posted a vacancy on the Board of Health, Kevin, and I don't think you have to split the atom quite that carefully. Oh, good. Even better. Yeah. Okay. So there could be, yeah, so there could be someone joining us in, in, in some capacity or another then. Okay. Great. Yeah, great. Can, I ask a, can I ask a question? Because I wasn't sure on this at the beginning. We're switching the Board of Health meetings to every other Thursday? The first and third Thursdays of the month was what we... Okay. I wanted to make yeah. sure. Is that what others memory? I saw head nods. I went, that's what you all thought. Yes. 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 Sure. Yep. Works oh, great that, for me. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And, you know, I, I said to the board, you know, that obviously I think that if there were reasons that we needed to meet sooner, that right. we would, but that we wanted to try and have a standing, standing schedule that was a little less. Um, overwhelming <laughs> yeah exactly the last two weeks the last two weeks have been great just fyi haven't they i like this schedule I, yeah. that you I hate to say this but you guys got to rest up because the winter's coming yes right <laughs> that's yeah right. that's right um and that's thank you bob that's my great that's that's that gives me space for my uh, which I said, what I said a command, which was, we do need to rest up and we do need to take care of ourselves and each other. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I made a plug to Reading uh, one point had done a, a mental health first aid training for all of the staff throughout the community as part of the ARCASA, the then ARCASA grant. And I was incredibly proud of the community for doing that. I, I thought it was great. They were great. Yeah, training. kudos. Yeah, great, great, great trainings. And I, and I asked, you know, people to kind of remember to use that training and, and to, to think about each other, because um, I know how hard people have been working. I know, you know, Kevin, you and, and the, our predecessors on the board with, I don't, know, I don't know if this is the 58th meeting since COVID. Um, and Laura, you know, staff, I know have been working so very hard. And this is a, um, it, it's not one of these things that we can just, you know, keep moving faster and faster and fix. We, we need to pace ourselves. Uh, right. and I, so it's my little, my little speech. I was being the safety officer. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and Laura and I have talked about that a little bit too, about making sure that um, we're taking, taking care because all of this work is important, but if we're not healthy and taking care of ourselves, we can't do it. So exactly so um okay so we're down we're, okay so public health needs assessment to um this was uh it's a continuation of conversation that we had i think it's been called a couple different things there was master plan there was um strategic sort of plan strategic yep. plan um what we kind of landed on here is, is public health needs assessment yeah, and Rick, you had asked me that great question at the end of our last meeting about whether we were talking about, um, to, to confirm people's understanding, are we talking about an assessment of the public health department, or are we talking about an assessment of the public health needs of the community? And my answer was that I thought the, that we needed to do both, but that the priority to me was to do, to, to get a handle, you know, and help understand what was happening within the department given the um, burdens of, of work that have been happening and, and given the um, feedback from previous chair about a need for additional staff. 
So, and looking back to, it turns out the last time there was kind of an assessment done was in 2015. So I think all of those pieces lead to maybe it may be sense to, to find someone to do an assessment, someone hopefully with public health expertise and experience with different departments to do an assessment of the department and how it's functioning um, and talk with Laura and Dan and Christine and, and others and you know others in town hall and talk to us and, and give us some direction. So that was my first priority. Is that something the others have the Agreed. same sense? Oh, kind of great. I see you yeah. nodding your head, Rick. Yeah. Did uh, Eleanor share with you the name, or or do you have uh, someone in mind that would be um, help us in that? Thanks. Um. So, um, Jean, um, had pulled a few names uh, for us, and I then I followed up and and uh, checked in with folks at Mass Health Officers Association and. Mass Association of Health Boards, we took a couple names off of that list uh, yeah. as having great expertise, but not necessarily being good for this kind of assessment, and right. added a couple places. And Laura, I know you've been, you've done some, you've reached out to those folks to see if you've got any, to ask about availability. I've reached out to all of them, except for the one that you were still getting me the name for, yes. and yep. only one person has responded. So far, right, okay. And when did you do that outreach for? Well, when was our meeting about it? A week, two weeks ago, two Thursdays ago. So you sent messages to- Only to, back from one person. Right, you, sorry, you, you sent messages right after our last meeting, is what you're saying? I sent it on that Monday. Okay, okay. Um, all right. Um, yeah, I mean, I know, I am aware of, of people, I, uh, organizations, you know, HRIA is an excellent organization. Um, SOAR is another organization I was referred to by MHOA. They, they do I think you gave me those, right? Yes. 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 I, okay, I they just, sounded familiar. Yeah. Um, another, but only that one uh, responded. Right, uh, MAPC um, did respond. They've been doing some work and I think MAPC is the great land use planning organization, transportation planning, and I know they've been getting active in the public health sphere. So I'll be interested to see what they, they have. Um, so that's the that's one piece. And then the second piece is the, um, the, what are the public health needs of the community? And I think that is also warranted for, for um, review and what are the, pub sorry, what about the pub health, public health needs and also what are the public health assets and resources? Um, I had a, a, a brief conversation with um, Bob and, and we talked about how often in, so public health, they talk about the 10 essential services and the 10 essential services are, are, are never provided just by one organization that there's, um, maybe local responsibility and there's regional responsibility, there's state responsibility, but there's also acknowledgement that public health services are provided by um, non, you know, nonprofit organizations and communities, their support it might be in public safety and, and the like. So um, our CASA, and I know it has a new acronym, but I, I don't know it yet. Um, um, it's the coalition. The, co the coalition, okay. Um, that's certainly a public health service. And I think it would be important to do a, a strengths analysis of, of what what is our cost, what does the coalition cover? What about the elder and human services offerings that I know are under Kevin Bowmiller? And, and how do they fill in on the 10 essential services and how do those things all complement and interact with the existing public health department? Um, so that's, that's the second piece. I don't know if that list is able to provide both. Um, I think they're separate, they are separate asks in my mind. Um, does that make sense to others? Separate projects? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. And, and, and I see, Kevin, I see your face, you're, you're being thoughtful. So I'm, I'm, I'm wondering, do you have, um, <laughs> 
what what are you what are you pondering about the the assessment? Well, no, I was just thinking that what exactly what you just said. One's really of a structural nature. One's more of a yes. clinical nature. Yes. Um, certainly. So it, I, maybe you get an organization that can handle both, but it certainly seems like even even still, it'd be two different part, departments within an organization. Yep. Um, was one of the resources health uh, resources in action? Yeah, that's HRIA. Yes. Oh, okay. Yep. And um, another one was John Snow Inc., which I think on the list that we had on our last agenda kind of looked like it was a person named John Snow. Um, there is a John Snow. There is a John Snow, but he's he. That was a long time ago. Um, JSI is is another uh, organization. I don't know, Rick, if there are organizations you know of in your or Paula, if you know, anything you're aware of. You know, yeah. I'm I'm not in this particular area. Um, That's okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't be sure, but I do. I do think that the sequence ought to be, you know, figuring out, you know, the board, the department. Are we doing every? Do we have the information systems? Do we have all those things? In fact, you know, that state um, state assessment of public health that I think Gene sent around and it came out last uh, July of 2019, mm -hmm. looking at public health in the Commonwealth. Um, yeah, was that the Winchester Hospital report? Um, no, no, this oh, was no. Um, that this was a strategic plan she sent out, the, the, the last one that had been done. Right. Well, no, this was, um, or maybe Eleanor sent it out. This was a, um, a report by a statewide commission looking at the state of public health in Massachusetts. And they broke out in terms of, um, you know, leadership and information systems and resources and, and so forth. And I'm, I'm just, my, my point is, is that that could be a good framework for mm -hmm. this first uh, evaluation. In other words, look at the board and the health department. Do we have the information systems? Do we have the resources we need? Um, you know, is the leadership where it should be? And there were, there were several other categories that they kind of looked at. That might be a framework to look at mm -hmm. how are we doing. Right. Just I can point. tell you one thing to add to that yeah. that might help because I noticed you mentioned the strategic plan. I redid the entire strategic plan right before COVID and I know Jean is reviewing it. So um, that will be done. It, it is, I, I did do it. It's completed. She just wanted to review it. So she should have that. Okay. That's good okay. to know. That's great so, to so know. So you can utilize that to go forward. And that's yeah. very okay. current because I finished it like right before. Okay, good. Yeah, I want to say it was before. I, I know I finished it before Christmas because I remember working on it around Thanksgiving. Okay. That's, that's, that's great. great. And that'll be a great resource for whomever is, is working on this. Thank you. Um, yeah. And Rick, I, I think that's a excellent so, suggestion to use that framework. I, I know now clearly Jean sent out a few different things. We're all thinking of different pieces. Um, yeah. You're, you're referring to the special commission report, which right, is a special right. commission, and, and that's an excellent um, approach because it's thinking about how is Reading fit within the findings of this and as the special commission, so the SAFE Act, which came out of the special commission has been signed by the governor and there's work now being done to try and get it funded um, and to figure out which pieces happen first and last in terms of workforce and workforce training and um, information systems, as you say, you know, kind of figuring out how to tackle it. So I think to, to orient the department to that, which seems to be a, a moving force in the state is, yeah. a, is a very good approach um, and positions as well for whatever changes may come in the, in the future. Um, sure. And it's well grounded in public health, right? Too. So, okay. So, um, Laura, I'm I'm gonna um, I'm gonna check on a, on a couple of names and, and let's see what we can do to, to get more information out of those those folks. Um, did you send requests? To, to blind email, you had to send it to like HRIA and, and John Snow was a, a just an info box. Yeah. Yeah. 
if you go right on the website, you can send them the emails. Yeah. And literally, out of all the ones they sent, one I couldn't find the person. You said you were going to get that for me when you have a chance. And the only the only one person responded. Um, S O A R didn't respond. H R I A didn't respond. David, you're getting me. Barry didn't respond. Um, John uh, Snow did respond. Um, I, oh, you heard from JSI? I know we've one of got... the one of them responded. I think it was. Hold on, let me go check which one it is. But I, I sent them to all those, and the only person that responded was Barry Eppard. Right from MAPC. Yeah, he's the only person that responded. Yep. And I think that was because there was a personal contact there with with Gene. Yeah, you know, when you fall into kind of the 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 um, um I'm trying to think, think of what the phrase is, but when you're into sort of an info request or you know request for purposes, it, you fall into a, a system. So, okay, so we want to move ahead. We we feel like it's a priority to get the staff structuring uh, question at, addressed first. Um, we agree that there's also a need for a public health needs assessment for the community, but want to wait on that until we get the other piece. Um, we've identified, um, it, it was suggested, I think Jean suggested we use revolving funds, fund, revolving account funds to pay for the um, first piece, the, the staffing assessment. Um, and if we did that, then we wouldn't have to um, look for dollars elsewhere, I guess. Um, in terms of, do we, Bob, does it make sense for us to put in a, uh, we would start putting in a request for funds for a public health uh, needs assessment for the community to be considered for spring? Would this, this wouldn't qualify under special town meeting, would it? Or certainly could, but I just, I just want to caution the board, and this is something I learned a week or so ago. Um, and I'll have to check to make sure it applies to the Board of Health's revolving fund. But right now, all our revolving fund balances legally are zero. And it's a complicated executive governor's order COVID situation. Um, in late September or whenever FinCom decides to set a financial forum, um, they will meet jointly with the select board to vote the amount of spending that can happen in those revolving funds. But until they do, money cannot be spent. So it's important that you know that. And I'll, I'll double check to make sure, but it, you know, if it applies to your revolving fund, and I'm pretty sure it does, uh, that includes you know, flu clinics. You can't have them. So let me find out. Thank you. Yes, that's, that's going to be. A yeah, problem. that's kind of big news. Yeah, uh, it was a surprise. It was it was one of those last spring when everyone's going nuts. Um, the MMA, the, the state said, you can uh, just carry over your spending limits from last year to next year. No worries. So we skipped that article at June town meeting and said, terrific. We don't have to do anything. Maybe we'll do it in November as a formality. And then someone noticed. Uh, in the very fine print until you have a budget. So once we passed a budget in June, that you don't have to worry part went away. <laughs> and indeed we should have taken that business up at June town meeting, but we didn't. So now the only way to remedy it and to set spending limits on all the revolve, on most of the revolving funds, REC is exempted, is uh, for the select board and um, FinCom to, to meet. So it's just a, a simple logistics thing, but just so you know. And, and when is that meeting? Well, uh, FinCom's meeting next Tuesday, and they're going to set a meeting schedule for the year. And I've asked them to meet uh, two weeks from next Wednesday to have this joint meeting as well as other things. So, okay. you know, again, and again, I'll, I'll double check and make sure Laura has all the facts. So again, this was kind of news that just came out to me. I think it was on Monday. Yeah. So we can't buy anything, Bob? Well, let, let me find out. I don't know. I think okay. not. Uh, from, not from that source of funds. We have plenty of other money in other places. Okay. Uh, it shouldn't, and again, I'm not over the stepping it, obviously, away, but it shouldn't affect our flu clinics only because in anticipation of what was coming up, I ordered everything in advance. Mm -hmm. I so we already have, 
Yeah. yeah, so we already have all our needles and everything, and I ordered them when COVID was high, so they're already in. Good move. Great. I have a related question for the board. I, I sort of ask him ceremonially, but um, I think it was a year ago in November, town meeting uh, asked for the Board of Health to be expanded to five members. Um, that would be a bylaw committee uh, and then a charter amendment. Um, does the board agree with that, object to that? I just thought I should ask. So, you know, to me, when the charter last got looked at, um, I advocated for no three member boards, but did not win. Um, your board and the board of assessors were the two that I really thought of at the time. And I, you know, the fact that, that no two members can ever speak to each other between meetings is just crippling. It's, so, it's such it's such an inefficient way of doing um, right. town business, Bob. I can't, I, you know, I am I, right. all on board. I'll be the biggest cheerleader uh, okay. for a five per, five uh, person board. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. I, I just I didn't want to assume. I figured I really should ask. Thank you for asking, Paula. Were, were, were you going to say something? Yeah, just yes, 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 <laughs> yes. Um, I, I mean. I, if nothing else, COVID has proven this is a necessity. <laughs> yeah. I know I don't get a vote, but as the official message forwarder, I think it's a great idea. Yeah, I bet you do. <laughs> the go-between. Yeah, the go-between yeah. is, is, is not a, a not an easy rule. It's a lot to keep track of. Um, yes, I, I was firmly, I, I actually started making noise about um, how could, could we do an instructional motion I was I was making the town meeting thread busy, um, and that was before COVID because I couldn't believe that there were only um, only three people. And um, Bob, let I, me I, let me ask you um, logistically. I'm oh, sorry, cut, cut you off, Carrie. Um, um, let me ask you logistically: What's a realistic time frame for April town meeting? You know, Kevin, there's there's two paths, and I'm not 100 percent sure which one this has to take. Um, for elected boards, this would be a long process. For appointed boards, it's a gray area. I think it's a shorter process. Um, you know, the, the longer process involves sitting a charter committee or commission, and that's a two-year process. Uh -huh. I believe this can go to, um, my best guess is it can go to uh, April town meeting, uh, but I also am fairly sure it has to go to the voters. So okay. Oh, change. really? Okay. We actually have to distribute the charter to yep. 10,000 right. households. Wow. And that, right. that has to be on a ballot with an election. So that, that's okay. I'm fairly sure about that. I'll check with the bylaw committee because uh, I have not heard them discussing this issue. And uh, it was fine for the summer because nothing was going to happen during you know, a pandemic. But you know, now, if it can be on for April's business, it seems like a good idea. Yep. And and our elections are for April town meeting. Uh, they so are. Could, so that's a so little... could go to a vote and then go to town meeting. Um, what's the what's the procedure? Is that to go to town can, meeting first into a vote? Either, either order. Okay. Historically, okay. We generally, ask town meeting first. Which we could stew with a special town meeting in let's exactly. say March. We we did that in the past. You know, have a January February special town meeting. You could also say the town meeting has already approved it by approving the instructional motion, quote unquote, and you know their their approval, but might be more of a formality. So I think it's flexible. Okay, all right, that's good to know. Thank yeah. you. And Rick, you're you're in agreement that I'm this, totally in agreement. Yes. Yep. Yep. Yes. A strong a strong <laughs> answer of absolutely from your board of health. Please. Unanimous. Thank you. <laughs> please okay um so last item i had on the agenda was minutes uh, i know i asked laura to send out that list of of sort of our status on the minutes and the ones that she had ready for review and um i, I didn't make myself clear i, I think there was some question of whether we were going to try and review them in real time that is not my that was not my intent uh I, I would ask that folks review the minutes as as much as they can and um return comments back to laura and let's see if we can have a nice list to approve at our next meeting 
And I know, Laura, I just want to say thank you to you and Jean's not there, not present with us, but I'd say thank you to, to both of you because I know you've been working hard to address the minutes that um, are out there from the 56 meetings that um, the Board of Health had for um, COVID response and, and other public business. So we can actually thank each other because the chair, the board members take the minutes. So we just set them up and make them on a piece like on the template. You make them pretty. We make them pretty on the template, but you guys actually did all the hard work, which was doing the minutes. Yeah. Well, you, you don't, don't you take the compliment. Yeah, no, you, you do a lot of it too. <laughs> Compliment you, you, and I know you're doing work now. So, and I, I want to acknowledge that. You know, that's that that's woman. A that woman doesn't sleep. I swear. I don't. I don't. <laughs> I, I Stop looking at the timestamps. I yeah. I got a I got a late message last night, man. And the sad thing is, I was awake and I answered. And I think my message was, we should both be asleep. <laughs> it was. <laughs> um. So, yeah, and I saw that chart, and I, I know I, I've known I've had a, some outstanding minutes. So I have my the next couple of weeks, my schedule um, is a lot um, less. So I'll be able to get those. Um, there's over so to the many to approve. Too. Don't worry about it. There's one. Um, I know one of the ones that was on there, I think there's a question mark, Laura, was 511. That is a joint, um, a joint set of minutes. Uh, between Eleanor and myself, Eleanor started the meeting. I took over. Um, the meeting was a it was a long board of health meeting. It was a long command meeting thereafter. So we split those. So I don't know if you've got okay. received the half of five eleven from her. You may just want to reach out to her um, and and give her that little nudge, and then I can just if you send it along to me, I can throw my side on. And I think my I think I have my side maybe even ready to go. I have what to about five fifteen? Five fifteen. Hold on. That's going way back. We know five fifteen. We, you know, I, I, I don't push you guys just because we do right now have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. We have twelve sets of minutes that are ready to go for approval. So. Right. I know. Right. Okay. I don't have. Let me see. Give me one it second. might not be you. I'm asking. There was a question mark. Yeah. No. I just want to make sure. It isn't me if it is. I do not have 515. Nope. So okay. we'll have to keep chipping away at that list um, and, you know, identify if, if there's a gap, maybe we can go back to the reporting and, and thankfully now that we have some administrative support can beg forgiveness and um and, just, <laughs> and ask if somebody can 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 recreate for us that would be good um but yeah i, I want to make i i've told laura I, I really appreciate she's made it a priority you all aren't seeing the the emails that are moving back and forth about this but there's there's a lot of work happening behind the scenes to get those caught up for us and um if we can do our part and review and, and get comments back that will be great um, you know, the, there's, it would just be good. I think it would take the weight off of everyone's shoulders if we can, if we can clean it up as best as possible. So, yep. Agreed. Okay. You want to come say hello? <laughs> Gets to come yeah. say hi. It's one of my favorite parts. <laughs> hey, buddy. Hey, friend. What's his name, Kevin? This is JT. Hi, JT. <laughs> Hi, Jason. How's it going? Hi. Hi. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. That's you. Oh, that's RCTV Studios. Yes. That's just a, not a real person there, buddy. <laughs> just a stuck face. Um, okay. So I think we look at that. We've covered it all. It's not quite nine. Uh, unless there's something I missed on that, I think I, I, I man managed to move us through. Anything that we didn't touch that Is that all of their last um anything that anything any that anybody that I missed on any of those topics you didn't get to talk about, ask about. Thank you for a very yep. organized meeting. Thank yes, you. thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, can I move? Can I move to?
to adjourn? Oh, wait, before you do, Eleanor okay. said um, no notes from that day. Okay, so uh, Laura, I will put that on the list of, of begging for begging forgiveness, begging mercy. Um, yeah, I mean, that's a little, little, little fresh sounding, but if we could, if we could put that on the list for admin support to go back to the recording and, and get something for us so that that can be reviewed, that would be great. Uh, I'm okay. sorry, could you ask that question one more time? I'm sorry, my kid asked me something. Oh. Um, sorry. If you, no, that's fine. Um, if you could um, put that on the list to ask if whomever is, is providing the admin support and, and reviewing recordings for us, if they could do that okay. to create minutes for that meeting that we could then review. I don't know if it's always the same person or if Jackie was just doing it that one time. So I'll, um, I'll ask Jean. Okay. okay. Great. Thank you. Or, do you know Bob? Is it always Jackie or? Um, I don't know a hundred percent for sure. So I think Jean's the right okay. person to ask. Okay. okay. All right. So that'll be a, that'll be, well, we should have a nice hefty chunk to vote to approve next week, next or two in two weeks. Two weeks. Yep. Yeah. And um, and if there's yes, so did I second you, Paula? Did Nobody second me. We're waiting. Yeah. No, because I asked. Sorry. No, no that's right. It's it was, okay. You had a question. No, that's fine, Laura. You had a question. You needed to get us before we adjourned. <laughs> okay. Second, I would second Paula's motion for adjourn. Roll call. Carry yes. All a yes. We are adjourned. Good night, everybody. everybody. Thank you all for the time. Have a great Labor Have a good Day weekend. weekend. Bye-bye. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.